Hello and welcome to part three. Uh, we don't turn on the radio in this part, we just give it a physical overview. So if you're tired of listening to me talk and you just want to see the radio turn on, uh, you can skip this part and wait for the next one because we do turn on the radio in the next one. It's the first thing we do in that part. Or if you want to stay and watch this one, uh, that's cool too because uh, we do learn uh, some more things. So let's give a physical overview of the radio. We'll start at the top here. You have the antenna jack. It's a BNC connector, which is very nice. There's uh, a lot more you can do with a BNC connector than uh, the modern SMA connector that a lot of radios come with now. Um, Yesu shipped these with one of their own antennas. I forget the model number, but it was a Yesu branded antenna. And that's not what mine came with. Um, I don't know what this antenna is that mine came with. There's absolutely no brand name on it, and uh, I don't even know if it's a proper uh, amateur radio antenna. If it's you know if it's proper for the two meter band or whatever. I put a picture of it on a, an amateur radio group that I'm on on Facebook, and uh, asked them if they could guess what it is. And the biggest guess people came up with was uh, either a CB radio antenna or a scanner antenna. But it does seem to work just fine. It doesn't work as well as the bow thing from school, because the bow thing from school has a diamond dual band antenna on it. Diamond makes the best handheld amateur radio antennas you can buy. And uh, the bow thing, which I actually have, sitting right over there, has a diamond antenna on it, and that actually gets out a lot better than this. Possibly because it's 5 watts instead of 2.5 as well. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking someday, because I have no idea what kind of antenna this is, I may buy a new antenna. Just spend 25 bucks and get a nice diamond antenna for this. It deserves it. It's a 25-year-old radio. I don't want to stress the, uh, the finals any more than I have to by using a mismatched antenna. I should also mention that uh, you can put this thing into a low power transmission mode, which gives you half a watt of, trans of, uh, of transmit power and half a watt is perfectly good for reaching uh, local repeaters. Um, I can hit repeaters up to uh, I don't know 10, 20 kilometers away on low power with this thing. It's very nice. And it again proves that uh, transmit power is by far not the most important thing in a, uh, in a radio transceiver. It's always your antenna. So perhaps this antenna isn't that bad after all since I can hit repeaters on low power with it. Hopefully that's the case. Looking once again on top, you have your squelch control right here. Right here you have your volume control, but there's also an outside control. It says balance. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know how I said this thing has two independent receivers, um, and you can actually listen to a VHF transmission and a UHF transmission simultaneously. Well, if you look here, this balance control has two limits on it, VHF and UHF. And what this does is, you can actually adjust which band comes in through the speaker. You turn this balance control, and if you have it all the way over to VHF, um, only VHF transmissions will come through. So if you have, uh, if you're tuned into a UHF channel as well, and something comes in on that, you won't hear anything. You'll see the receive light light up, but it'll be silent. Or you can turn it all the way to UHF and hear only UHF transmissions. Or you can leave it in the middle. So if you have both bands enabled, you can uh, you can hear them. So, uh, you can hear both of them if one from either band or both bands simultaneously come in. You have microphone and earphone jacks. The uh, earphone is a three and a half millimeter jack, and then the two and a half millimeter one is the microphone. You can get speaker mics that plug into both jacks simultaneously, and you get a general purpose uh, dial knob here. A knob that you, it's, it's useful for different things. You can uh, tune frequencies with it. Uh, you can change the, the memory channel you're on with it. And uh, stuff like that. And it's a very nice feature. Uh, modern radios really don't have this anymore. You know, they have up and down buttons that you got to push to do that kind of thing. Or you just got to enter the frequency or channel number uh, directly. So it's a very nice feature. I quite like that. Um, this is the original Yesu lanyard. It says Yesu right on there. Original lanyard, very nice. Ties right on this uh, loop here.
Um, if we look on the back, there's some holes here, two holes covered with a sticker that you could screw a belt clip to. And then here's the manufacturer plate, Yesu FT470 VHF UHF FM transceiver, Yesu Musen Company Limited, made in Japan. Very nice. And, uh, let me get the FCC ID there if you want to look it up. And there's my serial number, if that matters to you at all. Lot number 20, the first lot apparently where Yesu solved the uh, intermodulation issue. And by the way, um, back in, uh, I think it was around 1990-91 when people uh, really started uh, realizing the intermodulation issue. And uh, you can actually look on Google Groups and you can look up Usenet posts dating from the early 90s of people talking about these and talking about the intermodulation issues. And uh, people spoke up enough that Yesu, the good company that they are, actually offered uh, each and every person who had an FT-470 that they uh, felt had a problem could send it to Yesu. They would, they would give it a full go over and they would completely solve the intermodulation issue completely for free. Um, the solution was to change uh, the, the intermediate frequency, I believe. Something like that. So there's the top, there's the back. Oh, by the way, um, one, there was one minor hitch buying this thing. I saw this in the picture, in the pictures, the seller provided good pictures, but they were blurry. They were well lit, but they were blurry. If you can see right here, right here where my thumb's pointing, there is a crack, a small crack in the plastic. And I saw this in the pictures, and I asked the seller, I said, hey, is that a crack in the plastic, or is it a scratch, or what? And she got back to me promptly, it was a she, and she said, oh, I didn't even see that, it's a scratch, thanks for asking. And uh, I'm like, okay, fine, it's a scratch. I don't care about that. I bought the thing. Um, nah, it's a crack. Um, yeah, uh, geez. I'm sure the seller didn't lie to me. I'm sure, you know, just where it's small, they genuinely thought it looked like a scratch. Nah, it's a crack. Um, for that reason, I didn't leave them feedback. I wasn't compelled to leave them good feedback. Um, nor was I compelled to cause trouble because the radio is otherwise absolutely perfect. If they had ever gotten back to me and said, hey, why haven't you left feedback for me? I would have explained and said, hey, it's not a scratch, it's actually a crack, and then I would have burned that bridge, but uh, they never did. So, yeah, I never left feedback. Um, but I don't think it's worth causing trouble to try and get any money back for. Uh, it's fine by me. I don't think it compromises the radio in any other way. Um, this corner, the plastic top here, you can see is lifted very slightly. Um, but other than that, everything is just fine. So I'm not going to worry about it. This, the, the back of the radio is actually made of metal. It's not plastic. This is actually, this is actually die cast metal. Very, very nice. The sides are plastic and the front's plastic and the top's plastic and the battery pack's plastic, but this is actually metal. So nice to have at least some metal on there. Thought that was a nice touch. On the left side of the radio, first you have a button called lamp. That lights up the backlight. Uh, the, the display and the keypad is actually backlit. I'll show you when I turn this thing on. Uh, it's just a momentary switch. It's on for as long as you hold it and it goes off when you let go. Uh, you get the push to talk button, of course, and then up above the push to talk is a monitor button. When you hold it down, it opens the squelch. Useful feature. And then you have the keypad here. Uh, you have a full DTMF pad. This can transmit DTMF tones, including the extra tones. Uh, and if you didn't know, yeah, there are other DTMF tones besides 0 through 9, star, and pound. There's also A, B, C, and D. And uh, this can transmit those as well. And then you have four function buttons here, which uh, I'll explain what, I, what they do when, uh, when we turn on the radio. You have a speaker here, and right there, you can see now it's in now it's in the center of the video is the microphone. So very very nice. Um, that just reminds me of another uh, another kind of design issue these had. Um, the speaker is very quiet, and it doesn't get very loud before it starts distorting. Um, that's actually not a problem with the amplifier in this thing. It's a problem with the speaker itself. It was just a really um, kind of a cheapish spe speaker. Sounds beautiful. But it just it's made out of some material that doesn't like being driven very hard, so you can't run it very hard. However, if you have a speaker mic or any other external speaker hooked up to this, 
Um, you can crank the volume up and it gets very loud. This thing has a very good audio amplifier in it. It's just the speaker itself that doesn't like to get very loud. And uh, it's a standard LCD display. You can see it's got some printed elements on it there. And then of course we have the, uh, the identification here. Yesu Dual Band FT470 VHF UHF FM Handy Transceiver is what they called this thing. And you get an LED here. Uh, the LED lights up green when you're receiving a signal and it's red when you're transmitting. Now if you look on the right side of the radio you'll see right here there's a, a little rubber cover here that you'd think is covering something but nope you, it's it's there permanently you can't pull it out I've tried not too hard if I were to try any harder I'd probably damage it but yeah this cover is uh, affixed to the radio permanently there's actually nothing there it's covering all I can guess is Yesu probably planned for something like a DC power input jack to be here and uh, they just they never followed through with it they had the case molded for it but they, they never followed through with it uh, for the internal components so they just <laughs> stuck a rubber cover there so there's no way to get um, uh, DC power into this radio as it is but Yesu did make an accessory it slides on, it's a battery eliminator, it slides on in place of the battery, and it's got a standard barrel connector on it, so you can plug DC power into it. That's pretty sweet, and you don't have to run the radio on batteries. But even cooler is, um, you can slide this accessory onto the radio, but you can also slide your battery onto the accessory. So the accessory goes on the radio, and then the accessory has a battery, uh, has battery, you know, the thing for the battery to slide on on it. So you have your accessory here and then you can slide the battery on on the bottom of it. So and it'll actually it'll actually charge your battery. Um, that's what it was meant for. It was meant to be able to not only power the radio but also charge your battery when you had your battery attached to it. So you plug your DC power in there and uh, it'll charge your battery. That's pretty sweet. Um, it's a very rare accessory for these to come by today because um, China or nobody makes an equivalent of it. So it's a really rare and sought after accessory to find for these today. Well, I found one on eBay. In fact, just a couple of days before beginning to film this video, I found it on eBay. It's called the Yesu PA6, and I found one on eBay. Um, not tested because the guy didn't have a radio to stick it on, but it looks perfect, and it even comes with the original uh, Yesu uh, uh, cigarette lighter adapter that plugs into your cigarette lighter and it has a barrel uh, connector on the end. So yeah, I found that on eBay uh, and I got it for 15 bucks. I bought that thing so fast it bent space and time itself. Uh, really rare accessory for these and I managed to find one for only 15 bucks. That's awesome. So that's on the way here and uh, that'll be sweet because I'll be able to power this thing with 12 volt without having to build or buy a 12 volt battery and get the full 5 watts output if I ever need it and plus just not have to use batteries altogether and uh, yeah that's pretty sweet so I don't have it here with me for this video but uh, I'll make a separate video showing that accessory uh, when it comes. It amuses me to wonder how large this radio uh, would be if you had the battery eliminator adapter on it and the large size 12 volt battery on it. A battery eliminator is just slightly smaller than uh, the medium size battery and so if, if it came down here and the large battery was about here geez about that about that long and uh, that's pretty much it. So I've got to find two more AA batteries to complete the pack here and uh, we will turn this thing on and because it's two o'clock in the morning when I'm filming this, um, I'll actually, I'll gladly do some transmissions here. Nobody's on the air, so I'll actually uh, do some transmissions and uh, just do some fun stuff that'll let you hear what this sounds like. Got my batteries in. You can see, by the way, how much smaller this thing gets when, uh, when the battery packs off it. And uh, this was actually one of the smallest handheld amateur radio transceivers uh, in the world when this came out. This was very, very tiny by the standards at the time. Um, it's quite a bit big uh, by today's standards, when the battery pack's on anyway, but I actually really like that. That's why I was actually looking at older transceivers, part of the reason, another reason besides all the other things I mentioned, is because where they're very big, 
um, you know, you can just grab a hold of them and your f fingers aren't going to hit any buttons on the sides or anything. They're very nice to hold and they got a nice heft to them and they just feel wonderful to hold. Um, by comparison, grab the bow thing here, which I signed out from the university. So I put them beside each other. You can see just how much larger it is in the bow thing. And the bow thing is about the same size as other uh, like a modern ICOM or Kenwood or Yesu uh, today. And this thing has the, you know, the medium size battery pack. If it had the 12 volt battery pack, it's about that long. Then imagine how much longer this thing is compared to the Baofeng. Of course, the Baofeng's got this nice uh, diamond uh, high gain uh, antenna on it. So it still makes it longer anyway, just by the antenna though. Oh, by the way, uh, one more uh, problem you have to look out for with these things, as well as most other older amateur radio uh, transceivers, but somehow, amazingly, does not affect mine at all. Uh, these have a memory battery inside them uh, that keeps the memory alive when the ma when the battery packs out. Um, mine's not dead. I don't know how it keeps the memory alive when I whenever I take the battery pack out. Uh, the memory battery in this thing's good. I don't know how. Um, I wonder if the original owner actually replaced it at some point. Maybe it's been replaced in the past few years. As much money as I paid for this, maybe it was well more, much more cared for and well maintained and, you know, had all the maintenance work done to it that it needed, um, you know, before it was sold off. <laughs> maybe I bought a completely refurbished radio and I didn't even know it. Who knows? Okay, that concludes this part of our video series on the Yaesu FT470 uh, handheld amateur radio transceiver. Join me in the next part when we turn this thing on and explore its features. So uh, I hope to see you there. Stay tuned.